Hello, welcome Red Potters, now here at your podcast. Hello, Red Spotters. How are you guys doing today? This is episode 14 of our uh, podcast series. A little podcast. It's, you know, it's mom and pop, but it's, uh, it's, it's good. Um, today, I, cause I, cause I adored her so much from our, uh, from our last, uh, from our last excursion that I, I just, I would be a fool if I didn't, you know, have her on again. Uh, Alexis Moreno is back on, uh, on board. Um, how are you doing, Alexis? I'm good. <laughs> That's always good to hear. I love your Clockwork Orange shirt. Thank you. I love that movie. I haven't. I, b- believe it or not, the last time I saw that movie, I was six years old. Uh, <laughs> 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 Moving on. This is not a Stanley Kubrick uh, uh, podcast. This is a uh, well. As you guys know, last time what we had was a uh, Disneyland. Diamond Celebration podcast, um, but this time, this time there was an explosion of Disney news. Disney news has flooded the mainstream media and completely taken over to where, every, if you look into a you know a microscope, you could see Mickey ears in every bloodstream of everybody in the in the world. So uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about this big old massive convention, D23. For those who don't know, and if you click the link, I don't know why the hell do you, you don't know, but for the sake of those who don't know, uh, D23 is the Comic-Con of Disney and all Disney material, such as Marvel, uh, Star Wars, and, of course, the traditional Disney and Pixar, you know, slot. Yeah. Um, so, D23 has released a lot of things, um, to say the least. Uh, we have a lot of things. We have, uh, we have, a uh, News of the Jungle Book, which, um, quite recently there was released a full-length trailer of the Jungle Book. And, uh, we had an inside look at Beauty and the Beast, which, Alexis, you know you and I are hyped about it, right? Yeah. Which we, we, we'll get to that how you <laughs> missed it later. Um, also, uh, Johnny Depp is uh, is less creepy by going back to his pirate form in Pirates of the Caribbean Five. Um, also, Pixar animations have uh, two you know you know ambitious uh, return to forms. First, uh, put on your put on your masks. It's The Incredibles Two. And, uh, go to P. Sherman 42 Wally B. Wade Sydney because, uh, Finding Dory is coming, yeah. is coming back. Um, oh, I forgot to introduce. How are you, Alexis? Well, you know, I was wondering <laughs> when you were about to get to that. I am doing just fine, and I am ever so grateful that you acknowledge my existence. Thank you so, no, I'm kidding. Thank you, Kyle. I can't wait to, uh, do it. It's kind of confusing, you know, because we have two Alexises. I know, I know. It's, you know, it is what it is. Two Alexis's for our own good. Yeah, maybe you can do something about that. But uh, we're, I'm very happy to be part of here. Uh, I know Alexis is. She just got back from D23, and I just got back from Disneyland. So, you know. Uh, we're, we're all fresh here. on Disney exactly. so, attire. Uh, we, this is going to be a very, very uh, tremendous uh, podcast. We have a great panel today. And yeah. You're very welcome. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, another thing that I, uh, another thing is that, uh, Wow. Gigantic news. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disney Animations have released the information on both of their uh, newest uh, editions. One is a twist on the old tale of Jack and the Beanstalk. And another is a, uh, I think it's like a Cuban or a South American princess. Moana? Native American? No. Pacific Island. Yeah, Pacific. Like Hawaiian, right? Well, that's not the same thing as Pacific Islander. Isn't it, like, Philippines? I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, cool. My peeps. <laughs> My peeps. Um, also, uh, Disneyland. I'm not sure if the viewers know your ethnicity. Do you care want to disclose that? My, my ethnicity, I am the biggest mutt in the universe. <laughs> 
Um, I am French. I am German. And I am Pacific Islander, Filipino, if you will. Um, and white. French, Swedish. I, I am a, a well, part Spaniard from my dad's side. Um, anyway, speaking of mutts, uh, Disneyland is getting really mixed in with the, with everything because they are getting a major Botox injection. That is known as Star Wars Land, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, also another thing. What the fuck, Disney? What the fuck? Uh, Mary Poppins rehash. I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna rage onto that. And also, uh, for what's happening hot stuff, there was a major news in the parks that, like, there hasn't been enough already. Mm-hmm. Frozen is taking over the Aladdin Spectacular show, which me and Alexis, Soto, yes. are utterly pissed off about. Not just because the fact that it's Frozen, but the fact that we be- we love this show to death, and it is a go-to experience whenever we go to the Disneyland parks, and it's just, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, without further ado, here is Red Spotlight Entertainment number 14. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get on to the program. Uh, D23, how was it? It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of new stuff that we saw that we didn't see the first year. Are you still recovering uh, from D23? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I, I set up, like, all the gifts that we got in my room, and I'm just, like, looking at them like, dang. I wish you I have D-lag? D-lag? Huh? You have D-lag? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were saying? Uh, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I saw a lot of cool costumes, mm-hmm. and my people, of course, are the best. Disney people. <laughs> Disney people are the best people in the world, right? Yes. We are uh, pretentious as fuck, but we are <laughs> all that. So, uh, question. Why didn't you make it to the live action panel? Because. Of an answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Basically, I went with my mom, and of course, uh, last, or the two years ago, we got there early because I wanted to see what was going on, and she got mad at me because we had to wait in line for, like, two hours. So I was like, okay, this time we'll get there a little bit late and see if I make it to the live-action panel. They closed it at 6 in the morning. I got there around 7.30. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, there was, there was a lot of people. And we basically didn't even wait in line to get in. We kind of sneaked in because we didn't want to wait in line. The line was, like, all the way down to the street. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. And this time, like, it's gotten a lot bigger, because this time, I think Friday sold out, so... I've, and I've seen the size of the Anima, Anaheim uh, Convention Center. It's not that big. No, it's not that big. And can, I get, can I just say that um, from someone who has the perspective of seeing it, you know, from, from a distance, mm-hmm. and I have, you know, the presence that D23 had online was beyond massive. I mean, there was, like, instant updates, like, I don't know, multiple times an hour for, like, three days in a row, and I'm going to say that I think that this... I pretty much live-tweeted to you all the... Yeah, you did. Yeah, it was kind of annoying. I was asleep. <laughs> and he like, oh, Star Wars land, and all this kind of... Alice was looking... There's, like, so much news. He was blasting me with it. But I think... Um, you D23, liked it. I, I did that yeah. after. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this happened. D23, I think, was a... Uh, someone who, was not, who hasn't been there, but I think from seeing the reactions of the fans, it was a great convention, and I think this blew Comic-Con away, to tell you the truth. Yeah. They bombarded everybody with a lot of news because some, most of the media now is Disney. Yeah. I mean, whether we like it. Marvel, Lucasfilm, Pixar, animation, live action, and parks. It's it's endless. You even had video games, right? Or some some kind of presentation. Yeah. So there's Disney. Sunday. There's Disney Interactive. Yeah. Um. So, uh, how was the um, theme park uh, panel? Oh, it was cool. It was my first panel ever. (laughs) At D23 convention. So, what was it like being in the room? It was. I mean, it's basically one big stage, and then they have like. 
I think there were like pull out chairs all like Oh okay. Yeah, and then they had like three like main screens and it was funny though because uh, they have the that screen where they talk up from yeah the, mm-hmm. the main the, stage no 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 the where they write down what you have to say and the presenter has to say it oh yeah what is that called a PA I think so and we were just like looking behind us to see what they were gonna say next because that was like faster than how they were you talking you wanted a prompter yeah that one okay. Uh, yeah, it's pretty funny because we were yeah, right behind, were, we're, yeah. we were right in front of that, and we were just like, okay, well, I'm moving on. <laughs> what was the energy like though? I want to get that. Oh, it was cool. I mean, like I said, they were my people, so everything <laughs> I got, everything <laughs> I got excited about, everybody else did. So that was cool. Because usually when I tell my friends like this and that is happening, they're just like, oh, cool. <laughs> now, did they burn a bunch of flags and do a rain dance around? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so D23, I take it, was excited. How strict was security in terms of, like, phones and all that stuff? Uh, well, the panel that I went to, they weren't really that strict. It was actually kind of weird that they let us use our phones. Even my cousin, who she went to the other panels, she was like, oh, I forgot we could use our phones here. And I was like, yeah. Well, you know, it was all, you know, with, uh, looking back on the parks panel, I mean, there was a lot of information, yeah, but nothing really, like, uh, monumental. That, no. You know, if it was leaked out, and that that stuff was being leaked out anyway. Yeah. They weren't going to show any exclusive footage, so maybe that's why. And the biggest news of the panel, quite frankly, was already announced yeah. hours before, which was Star Wars Land. Yeah. Theater. So, it makes sense why. Um. Also, I was listening to the um, Schmoes No podcast, and um, then they said that they had, like, infrared people... Like people with infrared uh, uh, guns to uh, make sure that nobody was recording well, anything. Because yeah, Kyle, they have to. Because in the other panel, like the live action panel, the one that was like gone, like before six in the morning. I mean, they had the exclusive footage to Jungle Book, mm-hmm. Captain America: Civil War. They had like exclusive content. Even Finding Dory, there were clips of like movies that didn't want to get out. Which mm-hmm. you know what? I have to say that I like. You know, because it actually, you know, for the people who go there, who spend their money. It's to reward them. And then the rest of us, well, we have to wait a couple of weeks or months or whatever. It's fine. We all get to see it eventually, but, mm-hmm. yeah, they're really anal about that. Let's just yeah, say. Yeah, they really are. Infrared lasers, you said? Infrared lasers. Oh, my God. To make sure that, because when you record something, it's giving out an infrared uh, uh-huh. signal. Okay. So they have infrared um, lasers being targeted at, you know, and the audience. strict consequences. Disney can really, like... I mean, earlier you said that um, that you they had a you had to put your uh, phone in a yeah, bag, right? When you walked in to get in line to get into wherever the panel was at, um, they would give you a bag and you would have to like zip it up and like. Yeah. Now, one of the biggest things that have been released recently was the Jungle Book trailer. Now, all three of us have seen the Jungle Book, of course, um, but. What did we think about it? What are re- our reactions on the Jungle Book trailer? I was um, kind of um, blown away by it. I wasn't expecting, when the, this was first announced, a live-action Jungle Book, really. I mean, going for the bottom of the barrel, right? But when you look at it, as you're watching the trailer, it slowly starts to make sense what they were seeing when they announced this. And um, I just can't wait to see how this is going to be fulfilled. (laughs) And that ending, that ending, you get chills at the end of it, right? I mean, because I remember as a kid, me sitting in my chonies. um, Thanks for the the imagery. (laughs) Uh, You know, (laughs) as a little boy, you know, a little... Four-year-old boy, me oh. sitting down and singing along to uh, the Bare Necessities and all this stuff. It took me back. It took me way back. And just hearing, um, hearing that little bit at the end, seeing him float through down the river was just amazing. Okay, a lot. This is a bit of a controversy, yet not. What do we think of a uh, female Ka? I always thought I didn't get it really. He, I always thought it was a girl. I, <laughs> I honestly don't. I don't, I don't, I don't see the purpose of changing the sex of the character, but at the same time, it's not really that big of a deal. No. 
Because a lot of people, I was looking at like, you know. And Scarlett Johansson, I mean, who else does a voice like that? I mean, remember, remember the movie Her? Just she was the voice me. of the machine. So she's done this kind of work before. Yeah. Um, okay, casting. What do we think of the casting? We have Bill Murray right. as as uh, as Baloo. We have a Sir Ben Kingsley as uh, as Bagheera, mm-hmm. and we have Idris Elba as Shere Khan, and uh, and then we have a uh, we have a uh, Christopher Walken <laughs> as King Lily. I, mean, I have to give Disney like a million props because the casting of the movie is ingenious. And when you, the way you just listed out those characters with the actors who are playing them, it makes 100% sense because the characters almost semi, like, they almost... They the fit into their trope. Of those characters, I mean, of those actors, you know, it all makes sense. And those are all big, big names. I mean, the casting, and don't even mention the fact that John Favreau is directing the movie, who also directed Iron Man. Uh, Elf. I mean, seriously. And, you know, it, it, it matters a lot, you know, I think John Favreau was quite greatly influenced by the Jungle Book when he was, you know, so it's one of his, you know, favorite Disney movies. And That's his favorite animated film of all time. Wow. So you see, it all falls into place, especially considering uh, oh, cool. that like, Jungle Book. Good for him. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, he's getting to do that. But Jungle Book, uh, there's, there's a big anniversary um, happening pretty soon, isn't there? Yes. Yes, uh, what, there is. 50th? I think not. Or 40th. I, I think, think the fifty. I think the fifty. Right? Yeah. The fiftieth anniversary. So you know what? It it kind of makes sense. And I think it's next year too. I think so. Because it came out in sixty six. Wow. It came out in sixty six, so it does make sense that it, it it. You know what? That is that is a. Uh, That's so cool. Yeah. I'm so excited for this movie. And just just like to see how big it is, because when I saw the trailer. I was like, wow, like, this is really good. And then I told my dad. And my dad, he likes Disney, but I think he gets annoyed a bit now because I yeah. talk about it a lot. And he's never seen the Jungle Book. And I told him, just watch it. It's really good. And he saw it, and he was like, wow. Like, it's going to be really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love I, it. just all the um, elements. I love how they, they captured different parts of the movie like uh like the um like the raid in King Louis's uh, kingdom. Yeah. I love seeing, you know, Baloo fight off all those monkeys. Yeah. I liked seeing uh I liked seeing the final uh duel between uh, Bagheera and uh, Shere Khan. I love seeing like all these other elements that, you know, were animated from animation cell to like live action and I think that you know I think that this is going to be their most faithful one because we know in the past that it wasn't quite as faithful. To the original source material, like. Well, let's assume it'll be the most one they've taken liberties with. I think this just gives hope for all of the live action things exactly. they're remaking. Yeah. Like people talk so much crap about them, and you know, beating the beast. I mean, Maleficent wasn't that great, but you know, beating the beast, we know will be good. This one is gonna be good, and so I can't wait for the other. And one Disney's to come doing out. a great job because they're putting the right people behind it. Yeah. And with Beauty and the Beast, they are bringing back Alan Menken, yeah, which I oh think is God. amazing. And he's come conjuring up two new songs. And I think also songs from the Broadway show. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. I think that the. Uh, I'm I'm most excited for uh for uh, Beauty and the Beast. Um. Okay. I have a question. Are they? Is it confirmed that music is going to be incorporated in the Jungle Book? I think it is. Wait, Jungle Book mm, is. Well, I don't know. Actually, it's weird to think because you know they are doing at the end. Of, at the end, of we're doing uh, that whistle, which would it, that which would uh, give credence to the fact. Which that is yeah. bare necessities, but uh, I don't know. I mean, but they did. Uh, but they did play. Uh, you know, once I think upon a. Should have announced it by now, so I don't think so. They did play Once Upon a Dream uh, during the during the trailers of yeah. Maleficent. Oh, yeah, and it wasn't involved. In yeah, that. unless yeah. until the very end of the credits, you know. Maybe they'll have it as like background music or something. <laughs> because one of the most one of the reasons why I'm so hot, pumped up to go watch uh, Jungle Book is not to see uh, Bill Murray seeing Bare Necessities, which I think will be cool, but to me, oh, one of for Cinderella they didn't have it. They didn't. Well, okay. Here's the thing, though. They recorded. Uh, they recorded. Uh, yeah. uh Helena Bonham Carter, um, singing "Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo." And then, oh, I think that was a huge mistake on their part. To tell you the truth, I think you, you put it right on the head when you said that what was missing for Cinderella 
was the music. Yeah, because that's... Cinderella was a really good adaption. That's kind of what... I love Cinderella. I, I, I liked it, too, a lot. And also, Lily James also recorded A Dream Is Your... A dream is a wish your heart makes in the soundtrack. So it, it would have been really nice to see both of them. You know, those are the trademark songs. I feel songs. like it didn't fit. The vibe? Yeah. The music? Mm-hmm. Perhaps. Maybe bippity boppity boo because that scene was so uh, yeah. over the top. I mean, she did say the words, didn't she? Bippity boppity boo. Like I, it didn't go to weird, though. Um, but yeah, one of the most uh, things that intrigues me about The Jungle Book is saying, Christopher Walken saying, I want to be like you. So, uh... <laughs> Dude, come on, give us a little, little uh, demo. Oh, I am the king of the swingers. Oh. oh God, so, <laughs> maybe it's best not to. Yeah. <laughs> but just seeing that and just seeing the chemistry between uh, Christopher Walken and Bill Murray will be incredible. Because you know it's going to be good. Um, but look, 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 you know how hyped, how, how hyped up you're up right now and how we are? It was a slam dunk what they did to show off both Beauty and Jungle Book to the fact that now we're excited. I'm excited for what other properties they want to do live action. Now. It yeah. kind of like, it finally gives us a reason yeah. why they're doing it. If this, if it's a broad doing, spectrum. Yeah. If not, I mean, look, when they were first announced, people were very skeptical. Yeah. But now... It looks like it's gonna be freaking amazing. Yeah, it does. Um, let's shift. Let's let let's fast forward the clocks a year into 2017, when lo and behold, the French Beauty meets the Beast. It's 2017. I said 2016. We're talking about 2016. I said fast forward a clock a year after 2016. <laughs> okay. It's a bunch of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Can you math? <laughs> no, just, just no, no. Um, Beauty and the Beast. Okay, so far we have the lineup of we have a uh, we have Ewan McGregor as uh, as Lumiere. We have a uh, Ian McKellen co- going as a co- as a Cogsworth, Emma and the Thompson. freaking most brilliant casting choice, Emma Thompson as Mrs. Watts. Where the fuck can you go wrong with this? <laughs> Honestly, and the. And it's a musical. It's a full-blown musical, and I just can't wait to see, you know, Belle brought to life. I can't wait to see the dance, you know, brought to life, which we kind of did in Once Upon a Time, but that's a whole different story. Um, it's not going to be as good. Yeah. But I think that this right here is going to be going in the history books in a, in a in Disney Pictures history. I mean... Honestly, you are obvi- Alexis Moreno. Um, you are obviously hyped about this movie. What do you think? Oh, I'm just the casting is what makes me so excited about this movie. It, oh, and then LeFou, LeFou, Josh Gad, LeFou. <laughs> <laughs> what? That was so good. That was so good. I. It's almost a match made in heaven, the casting alone, all that stuff. If Disney knows one thing to do right, it's the freaking casting. Uh, and then uh, they were actually, they wanted Emma Watson to be Cinderella in the Cinderella movie. But she was like, no, but they still really wanted her. So yeah. I think they made this movie for her. <laughs> I think, okay, because Emma, Wa- Emma Watson, she is... She is very picky when it comes to her films yeah. as she does, mm-hmm. um, with good reason. You know, uh, she doesn't want to, you know, just go off from Harry Potter and do like all that, yeah. all, all you know, mediocre stuff. If she tagged along with this movie and to be the leading role in it, it must have been a hell of a script, yeah. you know, to be presented to her. Because this right here, it, it it shows that you know, with, with all these big names, I mean, Kevin Klein, he's the same way, with the exception of. Las Vegas, um, <clears throat> uh, Luke Evans, you know, he's a Broadway, you know, he's a Broadway, uh, you know, theatrical, you know, Australian, uh, hunk. He's gonna be, he's gonna be gassed on. Okay. Um, and then we have, um, the ever great, uh, Josh Gad as LeFou. And, uh, I love, his, I love his, uh, his, uh, his Instagram page because it shows a picture of him and, uh, and uh, Luke Evans uh, in the recording studio recording Gaston. So yeah, I they think they actually uh, showed 
uh, Gaston and Lufu singing at D23. She makes me really upset because I wasn't there. <laughs> but yeah. She says with no contempt whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing, uh, I mean, we're all hyped about, you know, Beauty and the Beast and all that stuff. Uh, but what about the animation? Oh. Gigantic, guys. Moana, Coco, my God. I think, uh, okay, what are you more excited about, Moana or Gigantic? Moana, just because it's closer. (laughs) (laughs) But I am excited for, like, those three movies. I I believe that uh, Gigantic uh, is going to be musical, right? Or or is it Moana? Moana, or both of them? Is Moana going to be musical? I think Moana is definitely going to be a musical, because it's a princess movie. Yeah. Oh, also, I... They know, are, because, uh, what's his name? The Rock is going to be singing in it. Yeah, and also I know that Kristen, uh, yeah. Kristen Lopez, the yeah. same writer from uh, Frozen, is going to write the music for Moana. Which... Are, are, are we going to get our next Let It Go? You're giving us a heads up. Be prepared. <laughs> hey, the Frozen songs are really good. No, 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 that, that's why. Be prepared, because they're going to be blasted all over the damn place. Oh, okay. If they, if they're like that. <laughs> As good as the frozen song. Finally, they're going to let it go. <laughs> I, uh, to me, in my top 20, one of the songs is Let It Go of Disney songs of all time. Because when you hear it, even though you want to hate it, you can't, you, you, you can't hate it. You always sing along with it, you know. Um, like, I saw this viral video of Marines. They were sitting around watching Frozen. And then you saw these, you know, big old tough, you know, buzz cut Marines. The snow glows wide. <laughs> and it's just it's just amazing what the power of Disney and Disney music can do, you know. Uh, so, you're more excited for Moana. What are you more excited for, Alexis? Soto. Uh, both of them are good. I'm not really particularly over the heels for either of them, but, you know, I will see them. I'm looking forward to them more. I am most excited for Gigantic. Because Gigantic, I mean, so much stuff. Okay, because you expect in a Gigantic to be this big old giant, you know, you know, ugly man. I think they're, they're adding, like, Spanish stuff. That's cool. Yeah. And, like, with Coco as well. I'm kind of scared for Coco, though. Why? Because there was an, uh, also there was a Book of Life. Mm, yeah. How much are they going to rip off? I heard, I don't know his name, but there was, like, this guy who... When they announced that they're making Coco, he was worried that they weren't going to get enough of, like, the Mexican culture in there. Or, like, they're not going to get it right. Because, I don't know. And so, Disney was like, okay, so then come and help us get it right. And the guy, he was, like, saying, like, bad things about Disney. But they were like, well, just come help us and we'll see how we do. This isn't the first time that, they, that they've that they had this kind of, you know, problem before. They did, uh, Pixar had this uh, project called Newt. All right. And it and it had the same, it had eerily the same plot format as the, as the movie Rio. And so, uh, and so because of that, Pixar shut down the production of Newt. Oh, what if they do this in Pixar? Yeah. So I, I wonder, I mean... If they do it right, I think it could because it's freaking Disney. Yeah. You know, so I well, think. Book of Life was really good, though. <laughs> yeah, Book of Life was really good. Um, Channing Tatum as a Mexican uh, serenader, you know, <laughs> where can you go wrong, right? Um, I think that uh, I, I don't know. I hope that they don't pull the plug because. Yeah. Because they, if they bring off, you know, because now they have a rubric of what not to do, so now they they can look at that and they could uh, they could very much go against the grain and all that stuff. Um, what's next, guys? Oh, uh, speaking of Pixar, let's talk about uh, Pixar real quick. Uh, guys, Incredibles two. Uh oh. Are you not excited? No, no, I want to see what you get. Oh, well, The Incredibles is my favorite Pixar movie. Oh? Yeah, so I'm really excited for this one. <laughs> all, I, all, all, I'm sorry. all I will say is, it's about time. It's about freaking time, right? Yeah. Uh, because it's long overdue. I mean, 2000... They didn't give us a date. No, so, well, mean... they said like 2018. 
14? No, no, uh, on the poster it said soon. It did? <laughs> on the poster it said soon, so we were like, okay. Um, but at least we know that it's happening. And Brad Bird said that the script is amazing. So, who, who, who knows? You, it does. Yeah, it does. Doesn't <laughs> Imagine the fact that if, if, it, if it is 2018, that's how many years after the first one? That's a lot. That's like, what, 14? But didn't years? the director, he wanted to make it a long time ago, didn't he? But something happened. He wanted to do it, yeah. But then uh, he was swamped with other works from yeah. Pixar, like uh, like Ratatouille. And all of a sudden, uh, and then all of a sudden Disney had the long-awaited uh, Tomorrowland to be, uh, to be created. So he, he was busy. So he's been a he's been a busy bee, but now that he has time now, now that they, Disney has let him have this time, now he gets to go back into the into the animators uh, seat and make the Incredibles two. Um, however, sure, he'll be happy. That there's no more Michael Eisner too. Um, no yeah, because I heard that they clashed a lot. Um, but Bob Iger and a and a and a Brad Bird are buddies. Work with anybody. Yeah. Anybody. He's a great he could work with Frank Underwood oh. and uh, all that stuff. This joke at the park tunnel because every time they would announce someone that like would come up and talk, his name was Bob. Yeah. And they were yeah. like, "Wow, somehow you know, guys, if your name is Bob, come and work for Disney. You'll for sure get a job." <laughs> I'm changing my name. I know. Hey, Bob. How are you doing, Bob? I'm doing good, Bob. <laughs> um, you said. In the last one, that you don't find Finding Nemo great. I didn't, but then I saw the the panel for Finding Dory, and I'm I'm kind of excited. Only for the fact that uh, Modern Family is such a good show, and I'm yeah. so excited for all of them to like talk to each other. <laughs> so all of them are going to be in the movie, Brad right? Burrell and Ed O'Neill, the two leading actors of the series are going to be, like, two major characters of Finding Dory, which I think is just great. Yeah. And what they showed was kind of... It was really funny. So I, I Diane gonna, Keaton was a... Yeah, Diane Keaton thinks he's going to be Dory's mother. Hmm. And Eugene Levy is going to be uh, the father. I, I like Gene Levy. Have you guys... Have you seen uh, American Pie? Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't any funny as the, as the dad in American Pie. Eugene Levy. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I think that he's going to be a great, uh, he's, I think he's going to be great. Um, what did you see? Are you are you allowed to uh, disclose that information oh about God. about uh, about finding Dory? I wasn't there. Oh, you weren't there? No, I saw it online. Yeah, from what they were showing online, she was saying she's excited for finding Dory. Oh, that's right, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, that was a that was a long awaited joke because because uh, Dory doesn't uh. <laughs> um, all right, I digress. Uh, so uh, fantastic shit is being uh is being a uh, given all around. Um, oh wait, did did you guys ever watch um, Pete's Dragon? No. I saw it when I was like so seven. Oh, they're re- they're doing a live action version. What do you think of that? I've never seen it before. Oh. I no. I was asking if you guys knew. Oh, you oh you were testing us. No, like if you guys liked it or something. Oh, what I've seen, I liked it. I liked it. I liked the I liked the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I like the dragon. He's nice and green. Oh, what about pirates? Pirates. Are you I'm intrigued. It's like, it's like one of your favorite movies. I'm intrigued. Yes, it is one of my favorite movies. Um, but it's just saying it's just taking so damn long to make that it's kind of killing momentum about it. Um, well, you know me, mate. I always love Captain Jack Sparrow. I mean, seriously, we've been waiting for the new one since the last one was finished and playing in the theater. I think you were ready ready a long time ago, which was 2011. When this uh, opens, it'll be 2017. I was waiting when I saw the first movie. (laughs) Part (laughs) 5. But yeah, I mean, it's like, it's much like... It just occurred to me, 
2017 that that will be 10 years after at world's end wow that just occurred to me like wow that we're so old <laughs> <laughs> we're so fucking old Go true! Give me my chain! We're gonna watch Pirates Rise! <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, I think that... Uh, w- okay, so far we have Javier Bardem. He's gonna be the main antagonist. Um, which... Uh, have you seen the movie Skyfall? No. With, uh, okay. Um, you've seen it, right? No. Yes, I have. I have. <laughs> All right, we know what a kind of wait. What? He's how, a great villain. I think he's going to bring a lot to this movie. And also, he was creepy in No Country for yeah. Old Men. So I think that he's going to be an extraordinary villain. I think he's a Mar- Orlando Mar- Bloom's back. Orlando Bloom is back as Will Turner. I think that is cool. Um, Jeffrey and uh, Rush, Jeffrey Rush, of course, Rush, of Kevin, course. Kevin R. McNally, and all his. Uh, I mean, it's just a. It's a great cast. Like Disney, like every other Disney movie so far. Um, but will this one deliver? Because a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with On Stranger Tides. I mean, uh, what did you think of On Stranger Tides? It wasn't that great. Mm. There's one scene that everybody talks about, the mermaid sequence. I don't remember that part. Well, apparently not. Well, well then, that escalated <laughs> quickly. I mean, things really got out of hand. Um, <laughs> I think uh, the one caveat here that I'm that I'm holding on to that I'm really looking forward to is the directors. Uh, the, the, Contiki, the, right? They directed Contiki, which is an Oscar-nominated, like, like a small-budget foreign film. And so I have hope that... And it had to do with water, right? Yeah, it had to do a lot with water. So we know that they have a big budget to do with, so... I'm really excited to see what they can do with that. I just want it to be really good, though. I think at the, it's been so many years now that by the time it opens, they have to deliver. And if they don't deliver, it might as well be the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pull the plug, as it were. Um. But who knows? Maybe it'll make a billion dollars, and then mm-hmm. it's like it's gonna be like Disney's version of Transformers. It just opens up movies and they make billions and billions and billions, and you know how worse it gets. So. Mm-hmm. Let's hope not, because yeah, because there are things of the pirate series that are you know are rather you know than more than just salvageable. But the great Jack Sparrow, for example, the, the great character that was born out of that series. I think they owe it to that character and the legacy of that. Well, character technically and speaking, we movie. technically speaking, we owe it to Pepe Le Pew and Keith Richards oh. because we all know the story, right? He based off Johnny based off uh, Jack Sparrow on Keith. Anyway, uh. Let's not get a hold of ourselves. Uh, what happens if it does fantastic? Then you can you can consider the series uh, reborn oh. and ready to blast away. I mean, if it's a success financially, which ultimately it will be, because all Pirates movies are, but if it's a critical success to the point where it stands up to the Curse of the Black Pearl, yeah. you can more than count on Disney. Okay, that's our green light to go ahead and make more. You know what I would love to see? I would love to see on ABC or uh, or Disney or the Disney Channel, most likely ABC, a uh, young Jack Sparrow series, mm. like following up as when he's a when he's a child. Bring him to Once Upon a Time. <gasps> that would be oh great. My God. Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Why not? Okay, which which version of him as a child or as an adult? Well, that's how you said it, maybe. Who knows? But if he. Alexa if he, uh, are you caught up? Yeah. Are you all caught up? Yeah. Did you watch the new uh, episode? Yeah. What do you think of it? Oh, what do you think of it? My goodness, oh my god. So cool. The Dark Swan has returned. Everyone I actually didn't like her evil. I liked her more like tortured. And all that stuff. Uh-huh. But you know what? I like. It was it was such a good episode. But then the ending, me and my brother got so mad. We were like, why do they always do this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our. Understand. That's what our very own uh, Giselle Gallegos thought. Yeah. She thought that you know that. They lost their memories again. Yeah, even even uh. Yeah, it yeah, it was. Uh, okay, I love the fact that it's not all Rumple now. Because when we yeah. when we saw him evil, imagine having Sozo, the previous uh, dark one, yeah. you know, constantly breathing mm-hmm. on his neck, you know, and all that stuff, being his evil conscience. I think that is a. Tr- 
tragic way to you know bring out some more character development because now that now that uh, Rumpelstiltskin is now uh, is now the conscience of uh, of Emma, it's kind of fucked up, you know. So we now know that most most of the um, things that Rumpel was doing was not by. Out, cause she was so cool in this episode. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I love I love Belle's uh, expression when she saw the tornado coming. Um, and, yeah, she came out of the um out of the uh, Mr. Gold's pawn shop and saw the tornado that uh that uh, Zelina conjured, and she was like, "Oh, <laughs> look, a tornado is coming." This is happening now. <laughs> I just love. It. So, is it confirmed that the sorcerer has died? I don't. I think he just fainted. No. You think? Wait, it's Orson? The, the, the apprentice. The apprentice. Oh, yeah, I think he died. Did he? I think mm-hmm. it would have been a bigger deal out of him dying. I think he just passed out. Because the big deal is Merlin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What did we think of the opening sequence when uh, Emma was watch little Emma was watching a uh, sword in the stone? <laughs> And she stole a little chocolate. I thought it was a wallet. No, she stole a candy bar, and she was gonna eat it while uh while watching the thing. It's a little nod. It's a little Adam and Eddie, further enclosing the fact uh, that they exist in a Disney universe. <laughs> uh, I don't know about you guys. I've 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 told this to I've told this to Alexis. I want a Hook. And Regina together. Yeah, I know. I get that expression a lot, but I just I, I want them together. You know, I want Robin to somehow find Marion because, come on. Isn't she dead? Yeah. <laughs> Quote unquote dead. Come on. They bring back you know characters. Oh, they bring they back the. Back up. Yeah, uh, be- uh, Swanfire. I ship Swanfire so hard. Dude, that was such a cool name, too. Bellfire. Bellfire. Yeah. Would you? Would okay? Honestly, would I you would, name your kid Bellfire? It, it was a cool name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if they do hire somebody to play Jack Sparrow, who would play Jack Sparrow? Not me. Yes, no. Not me. I have a. I have a. I, I still have a teenage voice. Adam Sandler. Um, oh my God, guys! I, I'm I'm Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they have to get somebody new. You don't think that? You don't think Johnny Depp would agree to play? A, no. Would do a TV series? No. no. I love Merida. Merida. Oh, Shout out to Sarah Vandiver. She she reminds me of Merida. Just a little shout out to you, uh, Merida. She was. Uh, I can't wait to see the rest of her development throughout the whole I thing. Hope show her more. Yeah, I hope it wasn't just a one-off. Yeah, that would be disappointing. That would be. I really loved how thing. Camelot Castle was Sleeping Beauty Castle. It was. Yeah. It looked like it. It looked like. In fact, I think. Uh, I think. I think. I think Eddie. Uh, Eddie himself in uh, Entertainment Weekly said that Camelot was based on uh, the so Sleeping Beauty the Kingdom. Coverage, how they pan out? They made such a big deal out of the castle. How they showed it, like you kind of. And then I was, hey, that looks like. Hey. But what? Like. And the fact that Eddie confirmed that it was based on uh, Aurora's uh, father's kingdom in Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. I mean, not Beauty and the Beast, uh, Sleeping Beauty. So yeah, it pretty much confirms that it is, which is, like, really kick-ass. It's, like, about time. I wonder if Aurora is, uh, Aurora and Philip are staying over. Philip is dead. I heard that they're making a, like, lesbian couple between Mulan and Sleeping Beauty. Philip is dead? What happened to Philip? He's dead, right? I don't think he's dead. No, because I remember the last time we saw them two was uh, that she that uh, that Philip was uh, Philip and uh, and uh, Aurora consummated their relationship and are now having a little baby be- uh, beauty. Wait, remember that Milan was taking care of Sleeping Beauty and she was like, "Oh, he's dead." And suppose and didn't Sleeping Beauty marry somebody else or get no. somebody else? Philip never died. Philip never died. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the last time we saw Mulan went off with a with a with a clan. 
and to yeah. If they're in Storybook now, where the hell is she? Dun dun dun. <laughs> and it, it can't. And we know that she's coming back for season five. They've confirmed her coming back. Who? Mulan. Yeah. Mulan? For season five. But I'm just wondering now. The last time we saw Aurora, she was in Storybook with Cinderella and with uh, Snow in that little like uh, daycare thing. You know what I find so cool? Wait, yeah, they were in that thing. Um, I find it so cool that Megan Ori is back as Red. I One of my favorite stories in Once Upon a Time is seeing Red's development, so I just can't wait. I'm just happy you know what? We're getting Granny back and Leroy back, and it's about I, time. I love the personal commentary. This is turning into a Once Upon a Time podcast, yeah. but uh, it, we don't care. It's still Disney. I was going to go see them, but I left early. Um, Re- Regina and uh and uh and Mary Margaret were there. I saw them from far away. <laughs> you also saw Dick Van Dyke from very far away. Actually, well, yeah, he was he was pretty close. Leroy, what did you say about his commentary? I I love Leroy's commentary on uh on saying you know I'm tired of this sister. I'm going with you guys because they 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 were like saying this is bullshit. We. <laughs> yeah, when was the last time Leroy was seriously involved in a plot? In the in the in the second season? I think so. Uh-uh. It had to have been because remember season three started off with them going to Neverland. Oh yeah. That was a, and oh it was a long yeah, anything. It's been two seasons. Off to Never Neverland. What? That the third season? The third season? The third season? Somewhere. The third season, in terms of what it did, and it, it furthered me. It confirmed my love for Once Upon a Time. He, he was so freak. Spoilers, guys. Okay, the, okay, we should have told the guys this. Um, <laughs> what's up on it? This is a once upon a time spoiler thing. Uh, <laughs> out of nowhere, it just happened. Um, but yeah, I loved his story. Yeah. I thought that was uh, so freaking unbelievable of what it did. Remember, like somebody asked me, like, oh, what it's about, and they start talking about Neverland. I want to tell him what happens with him, but I can't because it's such a good story and I want them to see it. <laughs> no, I am your father. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, we've established that we love Once Upon a Time. We can go on to our <laughs> Once Upon a Time. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry oh, for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> we really went off. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to, let's go to London right here. Um... Disney, why the fuck would you make and recast one of my beloved favorite movies of all time, Mary Poppins? Um, why? 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 Well, to be fair, it's not so much of a reboot, but a direct sequel to the classic movie. Okay. I want to hear what you have to say. I mean, it's, it's not all bad. Like, you know... Mary Poppins is based out of, like, bajillions of books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's a lot they could do with it. It's sad that, you know, Julie Andrews isn't going to be there. It'd be cool if, they, if she's, like, a maid or something. Because her and Dick Van Dyke yeah, were w- was part of the charm of the movie. Yeah. They were a whole movie. I can already picture, like, a little cameo of those two together. Yeah. Like, that'd, that'd be, be that'd be really, oh, yeah. my God, wow. that'd be so it would be nice to see him in the pork pie hat and uh, and uh, and her in a white outfit. Yeah. You know, oh. call call back to Jolly Holiday. That's so cute. But I mean, you know, the people or they confirmed right that it's uh, Emily Blunt. It's rumored that she's the front runner right now, Emily Blunt for the new Mary Poppins. I it's want confirmed. Who? Okay, Our speaking of casting, who would you guys cast as the beloved Mary and Bert? I think, I think yeah, she's, choice. yeah. Because, look, it, look, the thing is, there's a lot of, there is plenty of Into the Woods um, material that's going to be, like, incorporated here with the fact that Emily Blunt was in Into the Woods, and I will just say, um, she was really good, and she has a good voice, and I really think Emily Blunt's career is kind of, like, on the rise right now, and yeah. I think this may be the role for her to do. Also... 
and I and I've heard her singing voice. You know, she's got chops for sure. Um, but here's the question though: What about Bert? To me, I want Aaron to. No, to me, I want uh, Aaron to vet. Aaron. Have you seen a Les Mis? Remember, uh, Mol- not Molnier. I don't know names. Uh, okay, Eddie Redmayne. And draw us. Eddie Redmayne. You know, Eddie Redmayne is the actor who plays, uh, Marius, the young boy. Not the young boy, but the... Uh, okay, remember the song, um... Red. Black? Uh-huh. The uh, blood of angry men. Oh Aaron Tibet is the guy with the curly hair and the, and the, all that stuff. I want him to play Bert. He has a uh, like uh, he's, he has he has background in musicals like he has uh, and he's a great actor as well so I think he'd be he'd be great for it. Who do you think would be good for? I don't know. I heard someone say uh, Joseph Gordon. Joseph Gordon Levitt. And I was like, oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. But I don't know. It, it's hard. Yeah. You're dealing with classic characters and legendary actors like, like Dick Van Dyke can and Julie play? Andrews. Exactly. Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, because he was all that stuff. I mean, because the way that he boasted himself out, you know, properly is that he did have this, you know, rambunctious, you know, go get him kind of attitude and all that stuff. And that's very hard to, you know, portray. And the way that he did it, I mean, regardless of what P.L. Trevor said, he is the great oh, Dick Van Dyke. Hmm? What about Eddie Redmayne? He's too pretty. He doesn't look gruff. I'm sorry. He just, He looks too pretty. And he doesn't look gruff like Dick Van Dyke does. Like, Dick Van Dyke looks like a freaking man. He looks like a freaking man. Russell, he's too old, man. What? He's too old. Imagine, really? Hello, Mary. How are you? Might as well hire Dick Van Dyke yeah. back. You know, um, but it's... Also, it the sad part was that, um... What's his name? Dick Sherman? Isn't gonna be involved? Richard Sherman? Yeah. He's gonna be a he's gonna be a musical consultant. But he's not gonna be the music. <laughs> That's it I think that might be the hardest part. Alan Menken. For me, I think the hardest part is the fact that um I wasn't very happy with how Into the Woods turned out. Uh-huh. Did you like that movie? No. I didn't like that movie at all. I think it's one of the worst movies I've seen like in a long, long time. And the director of it, Rob Marshall, is directing yeah. the movie Mary Poppins one. Now, uh, look, I'll give him credit for his earlier works. I haven't seen Chicago, but it's an Oscar award-winning movie. Never seen Chicago. I know. So, and that reaction, I'm basing it off as well. We but, need to stop the podcast, uh, and we need to pop in Chicago, like ASAP. Is, I've never been really impressed with Rob Marshall. All I've seen from his parts for Into the Woods, and those works have disappointed But you've never seen Chicago. <laughs> So, and I, I and I've seen and I've seen on uh, Access Television his uh, the live broadcast of his version of Annie, and I loved what they did with Annie, you know, and all that stuff. I mean, it was a completely refreshed, you know, Annie, you know. The new one, right? No, it's not like the new one where it's set in modern time, but yeah. do, it does, but it does have modern technology, you know, put in it to make it, you know, to make the classic tale, you know, and bring it, you know full circle, you know, kind of like what they did with the Les Mis, uh, um, uh, you know, remastered thing or whatever. Um, but I, I, I loved his take on Annie. I loved what he did with it. Um, I don't know. I'm very, uh, I'm very uh, keen on seeing Rob Marshall's take, but you said that you wanted uh, somebody like Tom Hooper. I, well, I'm only basing it off on, on the films that I've seen and films that I enjoy and don't enjoy. And for me, Les Mis beats the crap out of End of the Woods. That's just me saying. So I'm basing it off that. And their most recent works with musicals. That's just... And I mean, Rob, End of the Woods could have been a really nice movie on its own, but for me, it, it really was a disaster. Yeah. You thought it was lackluster. More no, it, A disaster. That's what I meant. It, just, it went nowhere, and then it blew up. Yeah. So it's just like, that kind of concerns me that that's the person who's going to be in charge of Mary Poppins, which, I mean, in itself is one of the best movies of all time. So, I mean, it's just like... What about John Lee Hancock? <sighs> I like him better. You know who he is, right? Yeah. Did, didn't he do uh, The Blind Side, right? And Saving Mr. Banks? Yeah. So, I mean, 
But they already confirmed that's Rob Marshall, so it's like, what can we do about it? Okay. It would be nice if, um, yeah, it would be nice if Richard Sherman did the music again. The you, estate is all for it, which is a lot oh, easier than the last time. Oh, you also saw, um, I saw the little girl. Oh, yeah, I saw your Instagram, you know, photo. Uh, Karen Dautris. I don't know her name, <laughs> but That's I saw her. <laughs> it's unfortunate that the um, little boy um, oh, yeah, passed. yeah, crazy. And I found uh, that out, like, recently, too. Like, wow. that's scary. Michael Michael Gerber, I think that's his name. Uh, he uh, he died from a car accident. Yeah, I know. Full on collision. I think that's I think that's very uh, unfortunate. And I remember seeing the um, retrospect uh, Mary Poppins when a uh, when a uh, Saving Mr. Banks came out. There was a retrospect on a on a on a ABC Family on Mary Poppins and all that stuff. Karen Dotris was bawling. The Jane, because they were, but they, they've been friends for like yeah. 10 years, and then all of a sudden all that stuff, and she's saying, I lost, I lost my best buddy. So I think that that's really sad. Um, anyway, let's go into a lighter, uh, let's go into a lighter subject, and let's go into an angry subject, alright? What? How is this lighter? What the? Yeah, I know, uh, yeah. <laughs> What the cut the bowl, Disney? You... Guys, you take the podcast from here. Okay. I am. <laughs> what happened that um, your gracious host, Kyle, is uh, alluding to is that most recently, um, Disney Parks made the decision uh, to end the Aladdin Spectacular... The irrational decision. The Aladdin Spectacular musical that is... Uh, the ever a spectacular attraction of Disney California Adventure Park, and replace it with um, a Frozen show, and so um, Aladdin will be closing its doors along with many other things in January, um, and I believe next year will be the debut of Frozen, <laughs> which will be a technologically advanced show to immerse people in the world of Frozen. So. Um, Yet again. Uh, yet again. The thing is, for me, it kind of like, oddly enough, this coincided on the same day that the Frozen attraction that they're making at Epcot was set on fire accidentally, so I don't know if that was a sign. <laughs> I saw the signs. Um, but I will say I open that um, up my, eyes. my heart dropped when I heard this news. Cause yeah, it really, it really uh, not just that, not just your heart, but millions upon millions of Disney fans across the globe they who adore the Aladdin attraction, and even those who haven't seen the Aladdin attractions know that the Aladdin attraction is five times way better than the Frozen attraction will ever be. So, I think what's funny is that everybody's like upset about it, but everybody says, "Oh, it's gonna be good," but I'm just upset about it. I think it's so funny. I believe it's gonna be good. Believe me, it's going to be a great show, and it has to be if, it, if they're going to go ahead and go with this. I'm still waiting to see if they're going to pull back. Because they've tried yeah. to take uh, a lot of Aladdin show down. But you have to remember what separates Disneyland from a lot of other places is the fact that it is a very, uh, it is a local community. And the fans are like all around there, like the super hardcore fans. And when the last time they tried to take it away, they were not What were they going to do before? Uh, they were just going to get rid of it. No, they were going to do something else. I think they were going to put Beauty and the Beast, weren't they? They were going to put something in, I think, last time. Um, if, they do, if they do put Beauty and the Beast, I would all be all for that. If, yeah. if, and only if, they don't, they don't, they, uh, they don't do the same route that they did in they Hollywood they Studios. Toy Story musical. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh, that's what yeah. It was, yeah. A Toy Story musical? Yeah. Because yeah. they were going to do the one that was in one of the cruises. Mm-hmm. But it sucked, so they didn't do it. Yeah. But guys, it would be a lot better than a Frozen one. What? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it gets to the point of the fact is this. We're talking about the Frozen takeover of, of so many things. Yeah. It, it's just getting, un, it's getting like enough already. Enough. I mean, if they didn't see at D23 how little enthusiasm there is for all of these Frozen things... 
And to tell look, and I, I asked Alexis before the podcast about what would have happened if they even had the the the, the brass the balls. to announce the balls. this at D23. Alexis, what would have happened? The big hairy mouse balls. There would have there was there would have been like freaking anarchy. Yeah, like what are there, they what? would not dare to do that at D23. Okay, question: Would they? Uh, would they? Uh, would people start branding out their uh, their pitchforks and torches? Probably. Yeah, I would imagine so. Would Would it be worse than stepping into a Slayer concert? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but, like it would have been really bad. What I want to say is, if you are a fan of this show and you don't want to see it go, you know we've won before, and we can do it again. Go online. There's a survey. Sign it. Not survey. There's a there's a petition. Not survey. There's a petition. Sign it. So today we're gonna do a little survey, okay? And the survey is, do you want Frozen to just stop and just let it go, okay? Leave it in the comments below and just tell me what you think, okay? Okay, Kyle, take it away. Okay, thank you, Patricia. Um, oh, no, no, no. The thing, no, the what? thing is, is that <laughs> Frozen <laughs> is why is this moving? Utterly oh. respe, because uh, uh, it's the spirit. <laughs> you almost whacked her in the face with the microphone. <laughs> That's just great. Second show in, and we're already going to have an injury. Look, but seriously, I think they're going to do a hell of a job with the show, and I can't wait to personally see it. I think it's going to be a great show, but it's just, you know, the fact that it's frozen infuriates a lot of people. Yeah, it infuriates me, too. Everybody wants it to be the tangle that they're doing for the cruise, which I really want to see. Just imagine, okay, I would love to see a version of A Whole New World, because you know how it's like all sparkly and all that stuff? Imagine if they let out the the lanterns. Oh, that'd be so. That cute. would be beautiful. That would be. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> to me, forget love is an open door. The best Disney duet in Disney history is "I See the Light." In my opinion. Oh. <laughs> what is the best duet to you? <laughs> okay. No, you are not going to go at it. No. Uh, I know, but it's not a duet. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Well, Pumba? kind of. Yeah, it's a tree. Yeah. No, it's a trio. Oh, that's true. Because Simba does sing, yeah. too. So it's a trio. That automatically. It doesn't matter what point of the song. Oh, doesn't. But in turn, I see the line is amazing. Uh, yeah, amazing. So is the the other one Which from one? Frozen. Well, I really like. Good, I yeah. really but love that song. Kind of, is it? I think it's crazy that, that we finish each other's. The thing is, um, <laughs> there's a there's a reason why Kyle doesn't like that song. It's like whenever what, it came on, uh, I think it was. Oh God, here we go. When it came on on the radio, they were playing, uh, right? Or somebody's aux auxiliary cable was in. The song is playing. And I changed like the the, the lyrics, um, like what was it? All my life has been a series of doors in your face. And the thing is with him is that once I uh, I slammed the door and I hit him in the face, like, and that was by accident because he was chasing me and I slammed the door and it literally. Because you decided to hide Toy Story two when we were gonna go and we we had a movie day and I was gonna put in Toy Story two. At the school. At the school, in Contreras' class. And you didn't want Toy Story? No, 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 I, I did. It's just that the thing is, he was taking his sweet time, and he was preparing some kind of announcement, of because it was drama class, right? Mm -hmm. And then I found it so weird that it took him 20 minutes to realize that I had taken the VHS tape and hidden it. It took him 20 minutes to even realize that it was gone. <laughs> and when he was pressing play, he had no idea what was happening. <laughs> and then he was chasing me into the back room. And in the back room, there's like a smaller back room. Yeah. Um, and it has a, a glass window thing. Mm. So I, I, I just like ran in there and slammed it. And <laughs> there goes my face. <laughs> he just walked away. <laughs> it was amazing. 
and so that's and then I I made the reference and the, and it's just like it was what it was. Thank you for your lovely input, Mr. Soto. Yeah, any time. But um, yeah. But anyway, we were talking about um, what was we're it? talking about Aladdin. Disney. Yeah. Aladdin. So I mean, uh, that's what I think. But I really want to get into well, what did they announce? The big expan the the biggest expansion. That will ever happen. That has happened to Disneyland, and we're already starting to see how it, how big of an expansion it is. Star Wars Land. I I, mean, I want to go to Alexis first because she was there on the ground. What was the energy? They wouldn't regarding stop, Star Wars. Oh yeah, yeah, they wouldn't stop cheering. I mean, and it was pretty big because, like you said, they announced it before the parks panel, mm-hmm. and people were still like losing their shit over it. <laughs> So that was that was kind of funny. <laughs> and then it was, I love that. It was, it was funny though, because like I went in with my cousin and like her two friends, and they're not really Star Wars fans. Yeah. So I was like the only one that was like, "What?" <laughs> so yeah. Well, what do you think cool. of the fact um, that it's happening? Uh, of course, it's happening. We all we all love that. But what do you make of it being in Disneyland Park, Star Wars Land? Does that do? Do you have any issues with it, like not fitting thematically? into the park, would you have preferred to have been a Disney California Adventure, or do you think uh, it's too much, it's too big, too small? Do you, like do you think it's big? over, okay. I Short think, terms. I do you think, think it's overbearing? I do think they should have made it like a California or something. Because, like, like yeah. Disneyland is Disneyland. Yeah, yeah I get that. But, but they at have, the same time, like, it's cool that it's getting, like, an upgrade. Disneyland Park, right? Yeah. 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 When does Disneyland Park ever get a new yeah. land? I mean, aside yeah. from Greater Country and Mickey's Toontown, when have they ever done that? Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, they wanted to do Star Wars Land great. They don't have 14 acres in California Adventure. Yeah. They don't have the space for them. But I'm, I'm excited for it. Unless and they, then... unless they rip off part of a California, uh, the Grand Californian, which I think is a waste of space. But that's a, uh, that's entirely left up to a. Uh, to your discretion, uh, leave it in the comments below. Anyway, um, <laughs> right now we've already have, uh, within recent, uh, I, I, I want to assume days, I think it was this week they announced that the expansion is going to affect a large part of the park, in which I didn't think it would. I mean, when you think about it, they've already announced the Disneyland Railroad, Sailing Ship Columbia, the Mark Twain Riverboat, the Rivers of America. Mm-hmm. And Fantasmic are all going to be shut down for like all of 2016 because they did confirm they're going to start making it next year, mm-hmm. which I like. Big Thunder Ranch is going to close forever, and they're going to put basically Star Wars Land in that area. Do you think that's the best place to put it? Yeah, because it doesn't really change anything else. Yeah. So that's good. And, I mean, I'm happy that Toontown is still there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Last time we were kind of getting in a bit over, like, what was going to happen with it? Are they, is, like, is it going to be absorbed into Star Wars Land? But it looks like they they said, okay, we're going to keep it yeah. for now. Uh-huh. There have been rumors that they're going to expand. Expand. You're going to expand. <laughs> expand? Yeah. Oh, Hashtag that's, expand. That's kind of cool, too. But town. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I mean, it survived. Yeah, so far, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's great. That was and the only. Happy too. And I'm happy about that because it would have been sad either way to have seen it go. It is Mickey's town. Yeah. It is a part of Disney, and it's the only one, right, in the world that's left, or are there any? No, I think there's one in Paris. I think. Toontown? Yeah, isn't there? I think I'm not sure. I'm I don't know. Lying. Well, we've never been there. But I want to say um, it's just like it's going to be a big impact. I mean, all of these classes. We used to be best buddies. They're going to drain partial, they're partially drain the rivers of America. There's talk of making the rivers of America shorter or smaller. Um, so I mean, it's going to be like a huge impact on everything else. And I think what they have to. They're doing this in part because they have to expand Disneyland Park due to, the, due to the fact that the congestion over the past couple of years have only has just increased. And I think they've realized that raising the ticket prices is not doing anything. In fact, it's only creating an incentive for them to go. So I think this is a great thing, but then at the same time, it's kind of, you know, playing devil's advocate, Star Wars Land is going to be a huge draw. So you can yeah. just imagine when and it's open. And everything that they're doing... Uh, before that, I mean, 
hyperspace mountain. Yeah, exactly. And so then the Star Wars. Yeah. I, I think they've already. Today is the first day they're doing that, right? Is, is Force Friday already? Not Force Friday, I'm sorry, know. but. The season of the Force, isn't, isn't it already underway? Yeah. Well, they have Hyperspace Mountain and they have uh, the Star Wars launch bay. I think yeah. I said it's already open this week. So, yeah, they're doing a lot of Star Wars stuff. Hey, got to meet that quota, right? Yeah. Uh, are they going to... Imagine, okay, imagine running around a critter country and you see uh, Ewoks oh. walking around everywhere. That, that, that'd be kind of cool, like, if they mix... Exactly. Critter Country and to like... Yeah, and we were just talking about that. What if they find, a, what, they find a way to connect Critter Country as a direct line through Star Wars land? Because let's face it... It, they, it, it, it like blends into it. it. Not, well, not really blends in, but we, you need to create some kind of new walkway or space considering the fact that, well... Um, when you go to Critter Country, there's like a there's a dead end. Yeah. And you have people walking this way and that way, and it would be nice to finally eliminate that problem because it's a, I, I was there a couple it's weeks an ago. Awkward, it's an awkward U-turn. Uh-huh. And the thing is... I Lovely, was there, reached yeah. the end of the line. Time to go back. I was there and uh, getting fast passes for Splash Mountain. Getting to and from there is such a hassle. There are people in all directions. It's such a pain. I like, thought Adventureland was bad enough to get through. It's such a it's such a drag to go all the way over there and then to get yeah. yeah. And know, then the beginning yeah. of the line is like to the other end. Like I don't understand. And we also have to keep in mind they are going to have to reroute and rewire and retime as Kyle was saying Disneyland Railroad. That dude, I don't. Well, that's crazy. They they because okay. Because the railroad it runs on a on a on a on an eight track, and the eight tracks they run on wires to um to uh completely uh to completely uh you know make it go forward and all that stuff because it is a timed uh you know railway unlike others that are that rely on steam and all that stuff despite the smoke that smoke that you see in the train it's just for show. Um, but the thing that's really running it is that is that eight track, and so they have to completely reprogram, reschedule it, and all that stuff. And so it's crazy that they have to retime everything, and it's a big inconvenient, uh, pain in the ass. But you know, it, it has to be done. It, yeah. I mean, it, it it genuinely has to be done. And you think about it. I think it's crazy they they they're closing the railroad. I think so too, but when you think about it, look, the last big thing they made at the resort was Cars Land, and that is 12 acres to be exact, and that is a that was a huge expansion and a great success. Now imagine Star Wars Land is going to be bigger than that, bigger, and they're putting it in Disneyland. So I find it quite interesting that they haven't announced a price tag yet to how much this is going to cost. But you know what? I've, I'm going to quote a very good philosopher. Okay. It's not about the money, money. Oh, no. They don't it's, have to worry about it. They're going to make their money back with the, this new movie when it opens. Like, on the first night, <laughs> that money is going to be made back. So, no worries. They have it made. Guys, our Girl Scouts are... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our, the Disney Girl Scouts are out. Would you like to Would you like to buy some cookies? What is it for cancer or something? No, it's to build a new theme park. <laughs> And I find it so cool that they released um, the illustrations and the concept art about what it's going to look like. I love the concept that it's going to be a planet where people go into. It's a completely new planet, right? Mm-hmm. Will it be utilized in the movies, I wonder? Well, the thing is, it's going it, to the land itself sets place in the timeline of the new movies, okay? And it's a new kind of land where it's fully immersive, where you have all the people who are in the story. So you... That are actual characters from the movie. So, so you get to meet Finn. You get to meet you know. Well, not necessarily Finn, but like creatures or the people that are like, let's say that planet actually existed. Everything about it, to the detail, is gonna be in that land. So the thing is, I want to say this for people who are not so thrilled that Star Wars is getting its own land, which I don't know. I think it's a very small amount of people considering yeah. how big Star Wars is. But I mean, I will just say this. We're looking at the billions. Cars, movies weren't that popular with people and yet Cars Land is it's one of the best attractions in California Adventure. Just imagine what they can do with 
in my opinion, the biggest movie franchise I mean, of all time, Star Wars. I mean, I told you the the um, the detail, the excruciating detail that they put into the park. I mean, when you look at the, I have already told you this. When you look at the traffic light, the third bite is slower. You know, because mm-hmm. remember there was a line in Cars where Fillmore said, "I'm telling you, man, the third blink is slower." And then, uh, and then you look at the third blink, and it is actually slower. So just that, so just those minor details alone. Yeah, and that's really what sets Disney apart from anybody else. And that's what's always been. Look, I think it all it all began with Walt Disney. You had to pay attention to the details. Yeah. And that's the way they've stuck to. And it. also, you know, not just that. Uh, John Lasseter, John Lasseter himself said that you know here at Pixar, we stand underneath the drawers. And he had a huge part. A huge hand in making. I wonder how involved Lucas will be with a. Uh, judging by the fact that it's not his trilogy, I think maybe Abrams or maybe Kathleen Kennedy will have an involvement. I'm for that. sure Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, she's the president of Lucasfilm. So I think that, um, yeah, the future is bright for Star Wars fans. I could just say that. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. But you know what? In terms of in terms of building and all that stuff, they must do what they feel is right. Of course. Uh, just imagine walking into the cantina for the first time. Stupid Mike, it won't, it won't, uh, it won't stay. Does it, have, it, does it have a box hat? No, it doesn't. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we've, uh, we've talked your ears off long enough. Uh, unfor- unfortunately, I do not have a game planned for you guys. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Boo. Um, but... Kyle, can I do this something before we go? What? I know it won't take more than, I guess, maybe uh, about an hour. No, I'm kidding. Were you disappointed that they didn't announce um, Marvel Land? How do you feel about that? You don't care about it? No? No. And, I mean, they have, like, the... They have the Iron Man one. I mean, it's in Hong Kong, which looks... Stupid. Yeah, it looks like whatever... Looks like a rehash of Star Tours. Would yeah. you like a, a Marvel Land? No. no, I think Star Wars, Star Wars is fine. Yeah, it'll be big enough. Yeah, right. that's all I wanted to say. I I, I think uh, personally that it, it should be there. I'm a big fan of Marvel, and I think uh, fans you want. You don't say. I mean, I see like Look there, there's wearing. an Avenger. You, you have an <laughs> Avenger shirt. You have an Avenger. You have two Avengers posters. It would be cool if they did like Star Tours. Mm-hmm. They changed it to something Marvel? Perhaps. But the thing is, though, we haven't even answered that. Are they going to keep Star Tours in tomorrow? I think it'll be nice if they move it. Okay. Or I what? heard, I don't I don't remember that they said this, but I heard, like, the whole concept with Star Tours is that you're leaving Earth in Star Tours, and then once you get to start to yeah, the land, so it's like... As a ride, Star Tours fits perfectly in Tomorrowland. Yeah. But just the fact that it has a Star Wars name, kind of like, well, shouldn't it be in Star Wars Land? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of like, um, what was it? Uh, the same issue would be when you have, in uh, Hollywood Studios, you have Toy Story. Wait, that's the wrong, <laughs> that's the wrong example. Um, oh, God, I forget. <laughs> I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> Soundboard is shutting off. Not shutting off, but like, oh, yeah. So I personally feel there's enough space to have accommodate a Marvel Land behind Tower of Terror. I mean, we've talked at length about that if they ever were to do it. But I will just say though, it makes sense that they're not doing it just because of the fact that they're already going to do Star Wars and it's already a big, massive so much headache to do it that. It would have been cool to do it at like, uh, um. In Florida. Yeah, well, Instead of Star Wars Land. What do you mean? In Marvel at Florida? Yeah. Oh, they don't have the rights to do it over there. They don't? Universal. They don't. Universal what? Studios has the rights oh, to do it. Only one property, Hulk, though. Yeah, but the thing is, Hulk is kind of in the Avengers. And oh, and then don't like, they have a, like, a Spider-Man thing over there? Yeah, oh, so okay, makes the sense. Thing is, if they were to do an Avengers, like, ride or thing over there, they would have to exclude the Hulk. Yeah. So, I'm not sure how marketing-wise that would be. Here they can do it. But you know what? What does Universal Studios have to lose? <laughs> what do they have to gain by giving them away? I mean, seriously, if, if I were Universal, I wouldn't want to give them the opportunity. Here, have to make it, yeah, yeah. 
mean, if I were Universal, I uh, know, no, I'm not going to give you that golden age. I mean, mm. that's just the way it is. It's business. So that's why Walt Disney World virtually... It's business. a Hulk-sized problem, right? Yeah, but here we can do it. That's the thing. And mm. when I was there, everybody had Kevin Murphy on. Everybody oh, yeah. Marvel, All the time. So I think fans would appreciate that. It's just that I realized that they're getting, they're moving so much resources and, and manpower just to get the Star Wars thing going and to, like, to sustain not only that land itself, not only around it, but the fan, like, reaction to it. Like, imagine, like, opening day. How crazy. This They're was in the to... news that day. Mm-hmm. That was so crazy to me. Like, it was in, like, CNN and stuff. Yeah, like, that's like, crazy. Stuff. And just imagine, they're already building parking structures just to accommodate the extra attention to it. Could you just imagine if they opened Star Wars and Marvel on the same year? That would be insane. Just insane. Uh, How would, you, you, you've been to Disneyland more than any of us, because you're like, your <laughs> annual pass. Oh, right? don't say that. It's going to end in like two weeks. Oh. I'm so oh, sad. Sorry, Next week will be my last week going. Well, you've been a regular goer for a while now, and you pretty much get a good feel of the crowds. Yeah. Your estimation, if that were to happen, how would the crowds oh, be like? Oh, it'd be so bad. It'd be so bad. And then, it's because everybody complains that um the annual passes is what kind of making all yeah. the like the, all the, the crowd and all yeah that stuff. but this will make it like 10 times worse star wars oh my long. god and just imagine the star wars fans at the same time, and the marvel fans clashing at the same time like since it's bigger mm-hmm a lot more space. Yeah. So, I guess it kind of evens out a little bit. But, I don't it's know. It's an expansion of the park in itself. Yeah. And they're, they're going to have to find a way. I personally do think that if they find a way to connect Critter Country to Star Wars Land, that can help quite a bit to ease the traffic level around that area, considering. But, in my view, I think eventually they have to address the nightmare that is Adventureland. Oh. Because... I don't know how they would ever do it, but it's just like, Jesus, man. Just to get through that space is just an adventure on the take, Hey, take a Quinjet and, uh, <laughs> and fly above. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but I think what you're starting to see here is that... Take Lola. They realize, exactly, they realize that, you know what, it's time to update it. And I think Star Wars Land is only the first big step. I think they're not, like, all at once, but... Throughout a period of time, especially in the next decade, I think you're going to see a lot more happen in Disneyland Park than you than there ever has been. That's just my feeling because you know they've tried raising the prices, they've tried getting people, limiting the annual pass holders. Yeah. Things. Eventually, I think they realized you know what the only real option we have left is to expand, to you know make it as big as it possibly can. Because yeah. we're getting to the point where if we have too many people now and every day is overcrowded. Nobody's going to enjoy themselves, and that is bad for the company and bad for the brand. Yeah. So they have to they have to eventually address this, and I think it's smart to do it now. I think that it will be very smart. I think for a space conservation and all that stuff, um, because one of the downsides, which is why I appreciate Magic Kingdom, is because it's not so crowded. Because it's huge. Because it's huge, it's really yeah. and, it, and it is built to accommodate a lot of people versus Disney. Walt well, Disney was like, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the big problem. But the thing is, that it's been, as of now, literally 60 years since 1955. And 2015 and, and every, are worlds apart. And every year, revenue doubles mm-hmm. from Disneyland. So, I mean, it's not like Disney doesn't have the means to do it. If they wanted to, like... Five years. They could expand double the market. What we need here is aggressive expansion. <laughs> it's just a, it's a means of appropriating the right funds and exactly where to put things. Because, I mean, they work with... It's, it, just imagine how the hell it must have been just to get the blueprints for the Star Wars band to get in place. I mean, if this was Walt Disney World, it was like, ugh, 
half an hour. We have it. We have the space to put in there. Yeah. But here, you have to like micromanage. They're literally moving. They just. They have to be. The they have to be careful too, because yeah. like. Because it's Disneyland. Yeah, like, it's the original. So you don't yeah. want to like incidentally knock something off. Although that you I can't mean, replace. I think you know Walt Disney would have been fine with it. Yeah, I think a so long time ago. Yeah. If you were alive, I said uh, a long time ago that, you know, in a, in a galaxy far, far away, mm. um, that if you were, uh. <laughs> if you were alive to this day, I think you would have, like, bought the rights to the because one of the main yeah. one of the main philosophies that Disney had was that that Disneyland is an ever growing thing, yeah. and then he doesn't want anything to stay dormant and stay you know so stay still. Things come and go, which is another reason why, on a certain level, it's okay that we're seeing Aladdin you know go because it's it's been here and it's. But we don't want to let it go. Exactly yeah. the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could not have said it. Better. <laughs> 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 that was the most shittiest point I've ever said. But <laughs> no, but I think um, we're getting ready. What to killed the dinosaurs? Seriously? The Ice Age. Oh my god! <laughs> I think we're hey, ready. Batman, <laughs> chill. Are you finished? <laughs> Are you finished? <laughs> I still meet you. <laughs> Okay, I'm finished. <laughs> I think we're going to see, in, in these next 10 years, the absolute most aggressive expansion in the Disneyland Park and the resort than we ever have been. And I, for one, can't wait for it. Kyle, are you done? Like, like, cracking yourself up? How but, can I put Batman and Robin? <laughs> put it. <laughs> oh, man. I secretly love that. Uh, I I love the I love the shittiness of the movie. It's it's much like how my love for Sharknado is, huh? Like that. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up old wounds. It's been years though. Not old wounds. You put salt in it because it's still open. <laughs> But yeah, that's happening. I don't know what do you think of life is about the potential that this brings. Towards it sounds like you're talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're talking to yourself. You're like this. So Alexis, how are you doing? Oh, oh, oh fine, oh, fine, and all that stuff. It's not even loaded, mate. Anyway, um, what do you feel about the future of the park? I'm excited. I hope I get my past renewed once this is done. <laughs> don't worry, you have you have a long time. Yeah. Well, what I'm you excited. Because um, I used to be one of those people that, like, I didn't feel Star Wars belonged in Disneyland mm, yeah. because of what it is. And I realized why they were doing it. Um, I would have preferred to have been at DCA, but there's just no room to do it. But at Disneyland, there is no room to do it. So what would you say to people who are, like, kind of a little bit disappointed that this is coming to Disneyland Park of all places? Get over it. <laughs> like, oh my god, that's so great. You're getting something new. Like, stop complaining. Stop. And it's not like Disney will not disappoint. Yeah. Like, speaking of which, before we go, I do want to briefly have a little footnote about um, Pandora, the world of that. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, you were in the panel. What yeah. was the reaction to the Arab people? And I mean, people were like, oh, oh. But they didn't really show anything new. That's the thing. No? Like, there's... It's, it it kind of seems like it they're still planning everything. It doesn't that, you know, James Cameron, one of the best filmmakers... Oh, I saw. I mean, <laughs> doesn't it make a difference that he's heavily invested in this? No. Uh, seems like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, I, didn't, I didn't really like that movie to begin with. <laughs> Plainly said, no. I just love that. It's that okay. is, I, mean, I, 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 I wasn't a big fan of the movie. I wasn't either. I, I don't understand why. But the thing is, it's a world, and it's a, it's a. You have the filmmaker who made that who's heavily invested in the land of it, and I, what, I, what I saw from it, it kind of got me a little bit, you know, invested in it because it is until Star Wars Land opens. It will be the most technically advanced like land because they're gonna have the floating rock formations, and it 
truth be told, if it wasn't for what they have already accomplished with the, with Avatar Land, I think that was like the stepping stone towards the Star Wars. So I'm, I want to see what it's like. And you know what? They're, they're invested in it. So, yeah, I think the attitude is nobody really cares. No. But when it opens... I don't yeah. give a fuck about you. It's just, you know, they didn't really show anything new. Yeah. It kind of seems like... And like, like, no, like, they just haven't been doing anything. No, wait, 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 guys. Now, to the bitch who didn't have anything to offer at D23, James Cameron, what's good? Well, the thing is, I think what happened is, it's a combination of Disney taking the time, but then not wanting to, because James Cameron has, like, what, the last how many years? Like, what, 10 years? Yeah. Like, how many movies have you done? Like, how many movies have you done? So, yeah. 20 years of it. By then, two seasons of Sherlock would have uh, premiered. <laughs> <laughs> There's another Avatar movie coming out? Yeah! It's a joke, it's a joke. Um, to me, like Alexis said, Alexis Moreno, not Alexis Soto. <laughs> Um, like Alexa said, we don't really give a shit about Avatar. I mean, uh, it would be nice to, you know, to make it a learning experience, you know, and I think that, I, I think that would be, you know, very detrimental of what to do. But I, if it, if it's just for sheer entertainment and, you know, cash grab and all that stuff, then Avatar Land, go fuck yourself. And is that kind of called Avatar Land? I don't, something else. It's I, don't, Pandora, I don't even it's remember. Called Pandora, the, whole, the thing is, I don't think it's a cash grab. Because it's, called Ad- it's called Avatar Land. It's not a cash grab because no one's really excited about this. It makes no sense why this is involved in Disney. And that kind of... I would see it at Universal Studios. So yeah. I think mean, it makes a lot more sense than it does at Disney. I mean, to be quite fair with it. But you know what? They're trying to... I think initially they thought that this was going to, you know make up for them losing the rights to Harry Potter because Disney had the chance to collaborate with J.K. Rowling to do the Wizarding World of Harry You laugh and scoff. Why? Because <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> and you know what? Because they didn't let J.K. Rowling have any creative control and said, okay, I'm going to go to you know, you know what I would love? I would love Disney to buy Dalek Productions. Okay. Alexa, Alexa, Dal- Dalek Productions is the official Dalek uh, is the official uh, merchandising and uh, distribution rights, um, other than the BBC for Doctor Who. Oh, what's Doctor Who? I told you this. <laughs> you're uh, you're fired. <laughs> I want to mention that Universal hasn't stepped their name up in oh, recent years. I'm the thing is, look, oh, I, this uh, isn't it next year? <laughs> Harry Potter. Oh. This has been going on for like billions of years to, for them to do it here. I'm so excited. Hey, Dude, we need to take annual a field pass. trip. Annual pass. We need to. We need to take this a field. Fi- they're not. We need to take a field trip. Life savings. We need to take a field trip, and we need to go to the Wizarding what World, I, Harry Potter, here's Hollywood. Here's what I think, though. Look, if I'm Universal, I scored a big win against Disney getting Harry Potter. And now they've kind of trumped us with Star Wars. Because you know, Star Wars is bigger than Harry Potter. But it's Harry Potter. So yeah. you think that Universal is next to... I think if I were Universal, Jurassic World. But they already own it, yeah. though. They, yeah, but... but okay, okay, listen, listen, listen. Let, here. Listen, they Linda. They already listen. own it, and they already have a Jurassic Park theme park attraction. Yes, that's true, true, and true. But... The reality is, Jurassic World was a monumental hit that no one was expecting it to be. It was everybody was. Saying, we were expecting no, it no, to no. be good. It was we were expecting a, it to be a, a blockbuster movie, hit. It, we were expecting it but to, just to didn't make know money. How, uh, how but this thing it really blew went. so many things out of the water that you know people fell in love with the movie. So I mean, I, w- I would capitalize, make Jurassic World a theme park, a third gate, capitalize on that, and you get a huge event. That's what I think. That's the only thing they can do to, like, one-up the Star Wars Andrew? land. What do you mean, both what? Why, why not both? We already have Harry Potter. Da, 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 da. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter. That's what I'm saying. Like, since, I mean, their counter move, I would think, if I were in charge of Universal, that's what mm-hmm. I would do next. To, like, create that. It'd be hella expensive, 
But I mean, it's kind of hard to compete with that. Okay, here's what we need to do. We need to look at we need to look at uh, mosquitoes. Okay, oh. we need to look at mosquitoes. We need to take the the, um, the genetics and somehow manipulate the blood that they sucked years of, oh, years ago man. years ago and uh, and uh, make a new theme park out of that. I got the manual. You got the manual. Okay, good. You have the blue and it's in laser disc format. I yeah, love I love that form. Okay. No, but the technical term. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, in, that's great. You have it in a in a in a disc form. So, let's do it. Let's go in bar <laughs> let's go barge uh, Universal Studios and let's say, "Hey, dinosaurs, man." Capitalize on that. Well, let's spare. Hey, let's spare no expense. Of course not. We don't have to mention <laughs> one other thing before uh, we go is Shanghai, because Alexa is very excited about that, and she was there. Tell us about Shanghai. Oh my god. Okay, so there's a lot to tell though. Just as much as you want. I mean, the castle. Start there. The castle. The castle is gonna be a walkthrough castle. It's gonna have like two or three rides in there. Uh, stores, uh, restaurants. restaurants. It's it's gonna be the biggest castle ever, ever, ever. I'm so excited about this castle. And it's the thing I really like about this castle is that it's not just one princess castle. It's all of the princesses' castles. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Holy I think that's so cool. And I mean, they're making new lands, so that's cool. It's like you know, if Walt Disney made Disneyland today. That's the castle I think you would go for. Yeah. You know, a part of me, small part, wishes they destroyed some beauty castle and put that on top of it. But a large part of me says that that's bullshit and that would never happen. Okay, la- okay, Red <laughs> Spotters, we are done with today's podcast. Um, Alexis guys, has gone bye bye, guys. guys um, listen, thank you for turning. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Uh, <laughs> listen, I, I, a small part. That's like point half a percent. I no, love I Sleeping I Beauty it. Castle, and, and I wanted to stay the way it is. You know, it's classic, it's historic, and that's my castle. And I love the fact that it's small; it can only be seen from the park. You know, and why I bring it up, castle. you goober? I'm, I'm saying like ha- like this new castle sounds so amazing that part of me wishes you yeah. could hear because uh-huh. I can't go to Shanghai. I know. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the... If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unless you have a billion dollar expansion plan. And I think that's what we could, you know, wrap... I think, you know, what would be a sign of the apocalypse? If they knock down Sleeping Beauty Castle for the Castle of Arendelle. <gasps> actually, actually, this year for April Fool's, um, I what's the name of the CEO of a uh, of the of the Disney oh, Resort? No, no, uh, Tom Skaggs. Tom Skaggs, Tom Skaggs yeah. pulled a um, a fake uh, press press uh, release and and announced that uh, that uh, they're going to replace the Sleeping Beauty Castle with uh, with uh, with the Castle of Arendelle what? for for like for like twelve hours and then at the end he just said, "Okay, guys, we're just kidding." That was April Fool's. It was it. Well, a lot of people did. A lot of people were angered and all that oh stuff. Oh my god. That's horrible. That's the worst prank ever. And then everybody was like, no, you can't do that. Dude, literally, there was a, on Tumblr, there was this whole petition sheet of like, I would I would say it was close to uh, 1.2 million people, you know, <laughs> signing on on Tumblr. Uh, to, no, 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 no. If that were to happen, you, they would all at the same time. March up to the gate and storm in and like we're not letting you do this. We won't let it go. Okay. That one wasn't good. No more frozen. Okay. And then you know what the worst part was? Mm. Was that they were remaking the castle for the sixtieth. Yeah. They yeah. were probably oh like God, whipping the like... shit. And so everybody <laughs> saw it it so it furthered the um Now we're just touching up the gold paint. The guys just don't don't freak out. <laughs> That's so funny. Kind that, of. It's it's it's, it, it's fucked up, but it's it's funny. But I give it that. And what was so sad is that we would actually believe it because yeah. of all of the things that they've been taking over. I mean, look, they're so popular. It's unbelievable. We have to go back past just to see the characters. You're getting a sequel. What has a Disney Princess movie ever gotten a sequel 
that will be a theatrical release. I'm putting all of this mad Oh, theatrical here. release. I would say. A, um, a Little Mermaid got Our her own section. sequel with Kara Strong playing they Melody. Like, they theatrically have their own released. fireworks show at the Hollywood studios. They get their own pre parade, they get their own float. The, their song is featured in all three of the Red Ten Spectaculars, the World of Color, Paint the Night, and This Went Forever. I mean, they have their own Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique in downtown Disney. When is, is enough enough? They're on the cover of the new You know what? You know, you know when enough is enough? When? When they knock down Sleepy Beauty Once Castle. Upon Once upon a time for crying out loud. I mean, that was, ugh, I did not like that. That was stupid, wasn't I did it? I not yeah. like that. It was, it was interesting, but they made it kind of They were so in. It just didn't feel natural. It was, it was like, hey guys, okay, these are the characters. But what about Frozen? You know, it's just, it's just fucking, I don't know. But, uh, we have, I like uh. Anna. I liked Anna. Yeah, she was great. She was captured perfectly. Yeah. But was Frozen needed? No. No. It's not needed in half the things that we're in. Um. I mean, it looks, it's so bad that it makes news. I think the media is aware of the fan reaction that it makes news when the smallest thing of Frozen is added. They added Frozen to the great movie ride. It was like all over the news. They added Frozen to Fantasmic in the Disney World version. It's all over the news. It, it, no, it wasn't like a big part of it. It was just like a small cameo. It wasn't like they were integrated into the, into the show. But what I'm saying is like small cameos of Frozen characters in Disney attractions. The great cameos. movie ride in Hollywood Studios. Oh, and of course, you know, the irony is that the there was a Frozen like stage that completely obscured the great movie ride when you walk in the Hollywood studios, which was kind of like a big F you to yeah. the great movie ride. I think I read that it now has been, it's been taken down. So there, there's nothing obscuring the uh, great movie ride uh, thing. The, <laughs> the thing. I love how you, I love how you blatantly say thing. Well, I, I, I'm at a loss for words. The thing is though, it's enough. Yeah, it, it is enough. enough. And I, I, I want to repeat. There's two sides to it. Our side where it's like we've had enough and we saw uh, the Disney fan reaction at D23 where people had literally no enthusiasm yeah. for it. But then on the other side, when I was there on the ground at Disneyland, whenever those songs came on, particularly Let It Go, no matter if you hated or you loved it, everybody sang along and everybody just becomes immersed in it. So yes, there is a great part of it that this is Disney's biggest hit in a long, long time and they have the right to capitalize on it. But there comes a point where they run the risk of it just being that they're going to paint their own so, fan base. So you're telling me that Frozen is slimy yet satisfying? I think that's the yeah. best way, yeah. <laughs> uh, me, we love Frozen. I think it was a great movie. I loved the songs. And for me, when I saw that movie, it reminded me of the old classics. Like yeah. for me, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, I haven't had a feeling in watching a movie in such a long time that Frozen really restored that. So... We don't hate Frozen. In fact, we actually have a lot. We of don't love it. We just we just hate that it's being hammered in everywhere. But it's it's being shoved down our throats at this point. That's what it feels like. And they have to at some point realize that that, that this can't be sustained for a long time. I mean, I, I'm thinking that hopefully now we're seeing the end of it. But I think at a certain I think we've already crossed the line where it's too much. The Frozen taking over Aladdin. I think for a lot of fans. And I'm still waiting to see if that's going to happen, but, you know. I think it will. Well, Red Spotters, I think we've um, completely violated your ears of... Uh, of How has the show been? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say two on hours. here. I think well on two hours. Um wow, really? But I think that I think <laughs> for the for the mercy of you guys, uh, thank you for joining us in this uh, really long uh, podcast. But come on, uh, I mean, this is what happens when you put three incredibly, you know, you know, obsessed Disney fans into a room and let them go at it with with mics and all that stuff. But the thing about Disney, though, is that you know, is that it is such a big community. That's the thing. That's what we, that's what we learned, and that's what everything. And come on, it made CNN for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but overall, I think that, you know, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, what can I say? It's fucking Disney, guys. Uh, I'm Kyle Lira. <laughs> and uh, this is Red Spotters number 15. 14. Yes, yes. Thank you for keeping track. Keep listening to the post. Post, be engaged, and all that stuff. Exactly. So, I am Kyle Lara, your host. And I shall see you guys later. Bye.